Good morning, Lisa and Viv. Welcome to Tools Form Property. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the pod. You are our first professional sports women to come onto our podcast. So welcome. Before we start, I just want to talk to you about women's football. I coach my daughter's football team. I mean, how good is women's football right now? It's getting there. Probably still not in the place that we would like to see it. But yeah, it's definitely come on so much over the past 10 years in my career anyway. So I think they've all probably reaped the rewards more than I will. But no, it's definitely getting there. It's picked up so much over the last the last few years, really, and in England especially. And just loving it, really, aren't we? We're only four years apart, by the way. Not I know. That, not, still... that, not that much longer. But um, <laughs> nah, it's definitely, especially the last three or four years has been massive improvements and I hope it just continues. Yeah, us too. Well, let's talk about your career because as part of the pod, this is split into two halves. The first half, we're going to talk about sport and you girls. And the second half, we're going to talk about property. So let's start with you, Lisa. Currently at Arsenal, 260 professional appearances, 80 of those at senior international level for Scotland, 79 goals. Was being a footballer always a dream for you? And at what age did you start playing? Yeah, I mean, I started playing when I was like probably six or seven. And um, my dad basically ran the team, kind of what you do for Chloe, to be honest. You do <laughs> everything that you can do, running them up and down the country, probably putting on sessions. And yeah, my mum and dad were obviously a massive part of my ball upbringing from a young age. And I think just obviously playing with the boys at school and stuff, I was always hanging about with the boys and yeah, just playing football all the time. Every time that I could play it, I was playing it. So... Yeah, I think it just really stemmed from that. I've got an older sister as well, so she played. Obviously not to as high level as I did, but she, yeah, she kind of got me into it and I was kind of just copying everything that she was doing really, so. Sure. I've met your mum and dad, haven't I, a couple of times. And yeah. <laughs> um, I know they're your biggest fans and I can imagine your dad literally following every game you go to. I'd imagine he also kicks every ball that you kick, having watched him in real time um but look, you started your professional career with Glasgow City making your debut back in 2009 what was also interesting which I read was you also received one of the first scholarship recipients to the Scottish FA's National Women's Football Academy studying sports science was education equally as important as football to you and to your parents and how did that come about right so yeah, basically they'd started up this women's football academy. It was just basically to combine football with like a university study. So obviously at that time I was lucky. I was kind of that age. I think I was 17. I'd just finished school and I was like, right, what am I going to be doing? My mum was obviously really pushing me to do university, as every mum does probably. And at that time, women's football wasn't fair <laughs> enough. So you couldn't make a living Sorry, I'm, I'm really laughing. Viv's shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> Your mum didn't do that. Oh, not really. It's just it's like go and do whatever you want to do, and if that means picking up school later, then pick up later. But to be honest, like I was a bit of a study nerd anyway, so she knew that exactly. I would, you didn't need to be encouraged. Anyway. I did. That's <laughs> my mum had to encourage me. That's the difference. So yeah, I basically went to uni. I did uni for two years, um, and just that program really allows you to combine full time education with full time sport. So yeah, we got training sessions in the morning. I remember being on the pitch at like seven in the morning before uni, then going to my uni classes, then going to training at night. So it was tough. It was really tough going. And when I think back, I'm like, oh my God, I was mad doing that. But no, I think it helped me at that point in time. And obviously, like you said, I signed then for Glasgow City. And then from there, I went over to Germany and actually deferred my my uni degree, which I'm actually going back to do right now. Um, I'm doing uni right now and I'm blooming 28 years old. <laughs> but it's horrific. But um no, it's good. It's good fun. And I'm glad that I've done it, looked back and um, kind of prioritised football. And now I've got the opportunity as well to go back and actually pick up my uni again. So, Yeah, amazing. So, I mean, at Glasgow, you won the Scottish Premier League four years in a row, the SPL Cup twice, the Scottish Women's Cup three times, Young Player of the Year Award. You got to the last 16 UEFA's Women's Champions League for the first time in history. I mean, that's a cracking start to a, your professional career. It was decent. Yeah, it was decent. Obviously, like in Scotland, obviously the level's not, yeah, at that time probably wasn't as good as what it is now. But yeah, it was still good to then make the jump really to, to be able to go to Germany. Yeah. Well, we're going to come on to that in a sec because you scored 46 goals in 39 league games. Then you left in 2012 for German champions at Turbine Potsdam. How did you feel moving to Germany at 19? And what was it like playing in a German league in comparison to where you were in Scotland? 
yeah the jump was obviously significant it was a really big jump and just for me in terms of where I was with my life like my mum even though I was at uni and kind of had a taste for living independently I still relied on my mum heavily I'd still bring her home like my wash in at weekends and she'd sort out all my bank stuff and she she was still doing pretty much everything for me so when I moved to Germany it was a lot of stuff that I had to deal with on my own which was pretty tough actually and even just obviously learn a new language being in a new culture, a new environment, a new team. It was tough going the first few weeks. I was like, oh my God, what have I done? This is the worst decision ever. And then <laughs> the football kind of took care of itself. And as soon as that happens, kind of everything else just takes care of itself. I was doing well on the pitch. So kind of everything off the pitch was made a lot easier because of that. And obviously then learning German helped big time. Then the Germans kind of warm up to you a bit because you can yeah. make an effort and speak to them. You know all about that as well. Um, so yeah. Just out of interest, did your parents come and still watch all the games? They came to a few, to be fair. They loved coming over. Potsdam is actually a really little, it's like a nice little town. Um, they loved coming over and it was obviously an easy flight straight to, to Berlin from Glasgow or Edinburgh. And yeah, they were over every opportunity they could, really. They loved coming over, so. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Having spent sort of three years there, picking up finest medals on three occasions in the leagues and the cups, you attracted interest from Bayern Munich. And in 2015, you signed for Turbine's rivals. Can you explain that move? And what is that move in comparison to here? Because we know you're at Arsenal. Is it like you signing for Tottenham or Man I mean, City or Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, it's probably not as big, I'd say, the rivalry. But obviously, it was like at that time, there was kind of three or four big teams in Germany. So that was another kind of big team. But I mean... Yeah, it wasn't really, I wouldn't say it was frowned upon or anything like that. It was. I'd been at Potsdam, I'd done well for the three years I was there and I was kind of ready for the next step and ready for another part of my life, another challenge. So, yeah. You proved to be the right one. You won the Bundesliga in your first season and followed by the runners-up the next the next year. Did you did you enjoy your, your time at Bayern Munich? I did, yeah. Obviously, it was successful when I was there. Obviously, the first year we won the Bundesliga, that was absolutely amazing. That was probably one of the best experiences of my career so far, actually. Just the whole the whole thing around winning the Bundesliga and being on the kind of stage with the men and stuff at the same time. Where I met Viv as well. Yeah, it was a good time in my life and I, I loved it, actually. But uh, there was obviously the highs and lows. I wasn't playing um, week in, week out. And that's when I kind of thought about coming back to England and playing in the WSL because I just wanted to get regular playing time. And yeah, again, just having a new challenge after the two years, I thought I've had enough of Germany, really. I was there for five years in total and I just thought I can come back and be closer to home and see my mum and dad more often, see my sister and be with friends and yeah. Yeah, well, in 2017, you got that opportunity, didn't you? You signed for Arsenal Football Club. What a huge move that was. Uh, Another massive club to go from Bayern Munich to Arsenal. Looking on your CV, that is seriously impressive. Was that the right move for you? I mean, you mentioned about closer to your mum and dad back in the UK. You, but you hadn't played football in England before this, had you? No, I hadn't, yeah. I just obviously I had friends and stuff that had played in England. So a lot, had, actually at the time I had a lot of mates that actually played um, at Arsenal already. So Kim Little and, and Emma Mitchell, they were obviously at Arsenal and I could speak to them about the club and kind of hear the goings on. And I thought, yeah, that's something that I want to be a part of and... When I got offered um, a contract, I was like, brilliant, let's let's go for it, let's play, let's play in England. So that's what I did. And, and how was Arsenal set up in the training ground and the infrastructure different to, to Munich? Yeah, well, obviously at the time that we played at Munich, they were affiliated obviously with the men's team, but we weren't based at the same like kind of training ground and stuff like that. Whereas we, when we came to Arsenal, we were like blown away pretty much by the facilities and everything that was involved at the gym and the pitches. Literally just being on the same site as the men's team was, yeah breath of fresh air really wasn't it and um, just having everything in place to be the best that you can be obviously then helps you get to the next step and next the next level really yeah no definitely but th- this this feels like a good time to bring in Viv because Viv's your partner in crime on and off the pitch Viv I'm going to talk about your your stats here I, d- I don't know how this is possible actually I know I've texted you both recently ahead of today's pod 331 professional appearances, 91 of those at senior international level for Netherlands. You have scored 278 goals. Now, we talk on a fairly regular basis through WhatsApp and stuff between the three of us. And as you know, my daughter loves watching you guys. She has a a huge appetite for football. 
And we always see, you know, your name pop up as a goal for Arsenal, a goal for Arsenal. But 278 goals in 331 appearances, and you're only 24. I don't know how that's possible. No, I mean, to be honest, I mean, <laughs> played so many games I've played already. I do keep complaining that I'm tired and I've played too many games, but now I know why. I mean, obviously, like, I've just been been lucky to play in, in the good teams, as in Bayern Munich and, and Arsenal. And obviously, when my time in, in Holland was a bit different, I think, as Lisa's time in Scotland. I mm-hmm. played, for, like, a team that was basically bottom of the league. With me and not, yeah, two or three other girls coming in, we kind of improved. I mean, we ended up like third or fourth in the league, which obviously was a massive, massive step for that club at that moment. And from there on, it, it just went really quick. It was just Bayern Munich and Arsenal, and that's been it so far. Yeah. I'm going to go on to talk about your first professional contract in a second, but where did it all start for you? Because you, I know you started really young, like Lisa, and I also know, I think you've got an older brother, is that right? Brother. The younger brother. brother. Yeah, he's obviously into football as well, basically probably because of me. But my dad was just a massive football fan. He used to play football himself as well. Yeah. Not, not on a great level, but I still went to watch this game on Saturday afternoon. And we just played in the park the whole time. And same as Lisa, like you ended up going to school. And instead of playing uh, with the girls, like I played with the boys and we played football. And that's kind of just how I rolled into it as well. I think my first game was when I was just five years old. So that's how quick it started. Wow. So was your dad your sort of inspiration and motivation to explore football? Yeah, I think so. I think my whole family is like football obsessed, to be honest. Like my mum didn't play. She really wanted to, but she actually had to play hockey at that time. But I think arguably my mum is actually a bigger football fan than my dad is. So I didn't family. Yeah. So you signed your first professional contract at 14 for, is it SC Hirenving? If I pronounce that. Yeah. Yeah. In the top Dutch league. You made your senior debut at 15, become the youngest ever player in the league. Did you feel ready at 15 to make that whole new journey? And were you? I mean, I think football wise, definitely. Yeah, I think <laughs> coming in to, to, the de- like, to the team as like a 15 year old, obviously, like people look at you and frown upon you. But on the pitch, I, I always felt ready. Like I knew what I could do and I knew that I didn't really struggle keeping up with, with the pace or with the quality at all. I think the biggest thing for me was when I was like 15, I ended up being in a changing room with with girls that are like 30 years old and I didn't know what to speak about. Like I was going to school and I was like worried about my math exam the next day, but they obviously had complete different issues in life as I had. And I think that was the hardest bit, especially the first year for me. You do get used to it, but it, yeah, it did take me a bit, to be honest. On well, the pitch, it didn't seem that way because, I mean, you scored 27 goals in 26 games in your first season, 41 goals in 26 games the following season. You won top scorer. You're 17. You're 17. I mean, was the interest becoming apparent around, you know, not just Holland, but other countries? Yeah, definitely. I think, especially after like my second season at Heerenveen, like, yeah, a lot of people were obviously speculating where I would go, especially because I actually made my debut with the national team. And I think the moment you actually start playing national team as well, that is then gets you in the bigger picture if that makes sense and at my time like I was obviously 17 still and I had to make the decision if if I wanted to move abroad or not that's the only time my mom actually did push me to to finish my school first because that was my last year at school and that's what I decided to do and um, I made a couple trips to like to Paris to to Malmo to Munich and on the end yeah I had the best feeling with Bayern Munich yeah, you, you, you did. And obviously that was the same journey as, as Lisa. What was it about Munich that attracted you at the time? Do you mind me asking also what other clubs? Was you say Paris? Was that PSG, was it? or? Yeah, I mean, I basically, I think on the end, like before making the both, I've had contact with 39 different clubs, <laughs> which obviously <laughs> got broken down <laughs> to like four or five clubs really, really quickly. I think for me at, at that time at Bayern, like Bayern wasn't the biggest team in Germany, but they wanted to make the step there. And obviously for me thinking, okay, I'm a 17 year old. I want to go somewhere that I can actually play week in, week out, but not just develop myself, but also help developing the team and like the club moving forward. And I think that's what really interested me in signing for Bayern. Um, even even going there with my parents for a weekend, we went to a men's game and I think just the, the atmosphere around the club was really classy and it felt really like 
yeah, familiar with with what I wanted in the club. So that's basically was a massive thing in my decision. Yeah, it sounded like they put out all the stops to to get you to sign on the dotted line. Thirty nine clubs. I mean, did you have an agent, or was it your mum and dad literally just deferring nah, the clubs to voicemail or something? <laughs> To be fair, like a lot of like at that time, I was reading through my emails like a while back and basically like somehow clubs would just email me directly. Obviously completely different right now, but at that time, yeah. that's how it basically it Like yeah. they would call your mom and dad be like, what is, what is she going to do? <laughs> Obviously that happened with you as well. Like I think yeah. your dad helps you for wow. like a year. Yeah. And then I got an agent in, in Holland and um, she basically helped me uh, say no to a lot of the clubs. <laughs> With a bit of help of Ian Robin's father at that moment, we, we ended up signing my contract with Bayern Munich. Right. Wow. It was reported that you didn't enjoy the style of football at Munich. Was that true? And did that kind of sway you to then speak to other clubs a couple of years later? Um, yeah, I hated it in Munich the first couple of months. And I think... Two things, obviously, like for me, for the first time, actually being being away from home, being 17 years old, just turned 18, couldn't really speak English or German, which made it really hard, obviously, for me to communicate with people and to, to get a play team. And I basically went from training like three or four times a week to, to training seven or eight times a week and playing games. And obviously, like your body, especially when you're younger, and you're still growing like that's You really need to get used to that. So my first season, I was literally injured all the time and I didn't really end up playing a lot of games for Bayern that year and then I was literally thinking why am I playing football if all I need to do is put my running shoes on and and go out on the track and then obviously like we had the World Cup on the end of that season and we played the World Cup and the World Cup wasn't really what any of us expected either and then I think after that it was just kind of like that point that I had to decide if I wanted to actually keep going or not and I'm happy, obviously, I did because the second season, well, at least I came to Bayern and that is basically when I I found my my swing as well. And like we just actually flew flew through the league and just, <laughs> yeah, but basically like, yeah, started scoring, started playing. We actually played some decent football sometimes. And then, yeah, the last two years we were actually good at Bayern. You decided to move to Arsenal. Did you just out of interest? Did you both move to Arsenal at the same time? Yeah. Right. Because I was looking at your stats in that first year, Viv. Um, fifty-four goals in fifty-six games. I'm a, I'm assuming you didn't mind the style of football at Arsenal. To be honest, like my my first year at Arsenal was kind of actually the same story as at Bayern. Oh, like I, I yeah. we obviously just came back from the Euros in 2017. I my excellent my first year I ended up playing. I think 10 games max and I didn't really play much Lisa obviously came in and she she done amazing and she played every game and and went from there but I really struggled my first season seems to be something that happens at every single club so far but then the second team uh, second season like I just picked up and that's when I started playing and scoring and Lisa's basically been doing that for the whole three and a half years she's been at the club now it's interesting isn't it moving clubs moving countries is it the transition that can have an impact on the pitch. I mean, we, it's been mentioned this week about, you know, Frank Lampard getting the, the sack at Chelsea, me being a Chelsea fan. I'm absolutely gutted. I've had, I've been distraught all week. But I look at the players that they brought in and thinking Habits hasn't been at the level that Frank needed. Same with Tino Werner, hasn't been at the level that Frank needed. First-hand experience, moving country to a different league, can that really affect your performance, the, the way it's been reported this week? I would say so, without a doubt, yeah. Sure. Obviously, those boys as well, coming from Germany, I think just the whole physicality of the, the English Premier League, it obviously takes time to get used to. And mm. I think those boys, they will come good, no doubt about it. They are top, top players. Yeah, but yeah. It just takes time to adjust, really. Sure. Okay, well, I want to bring you back into this conversation, Lisa, because we... I can't ignore, I know we've spoken about your stats for your domestic leagues, but your international records are also seriously impressive. So you've been capped by Scotland 83 times, Lisa, 17 goals. Do you mind sort of sharing some of your highlights? I mean, I don't want to talk too much about your assist against England in the uh, Euros. but I'd come um, to that anyway. <laughs> But what, um, yeah, I mean, I know you're a proud Scotswoman, still playing for Scotland now. 
Yeah, do you mind sort of showing us where it all started? Um, yeah, kind of similar to Bib, really. I was playing with the, the youth, Scotland youth national teams, and then obviously doing really well at Glasgow City. Put me in good stead for then getting picked with the national team, which I then did, I think, at maybe 18 or 19. So, yeah, I mean, there's been a few highlights, I'd say. Obviously, it's not as been successful as what, what Bibbs used to with Holland. No, but, you um, still played the Euros. You played yeah, the World no, I've Cup, played, like... exactly. I've played in a Euros and a World Cup, which obviously wanted to take both yeah. of them off my kind of things to do, although we, we didn't put ourselves in the best yeah, in the best shape for actually doing well there. But I mean, yeah, whole different story. I was just delighted to have, have qualified for the World Cup and especially the World Cup because we hadn't done it before. So, I mean, yeah, we've messed up this time around, which sucks, but um, I'll be there supporting Viv, so that'll be fun. Well, bringing in Viv again, your international record. <laughs> uh, 91 appearances, 70 goals. I mean, you've you started breaking records as early as 16. I think you scored six against Montenegro, eight goals against Kazakhstan, then four against Ukraine. You were the all-time highest scorer for the UEFA under-17s. I mean, you were just born to score goals, weren't you? Yeah, quite boring, eh? It Not is, really yeah. Else. Yeah, I mean, just the same as Lisa. Like, obviously, I started playing the under-15s, under-17s, and then I was meant to go to the under-19s, but I ended up going, obviously, directly to the first team. Then starting to play national team as the first team, obviously, like, was, was amazing. But then the under-19s qualified for a European Championship in Norway, and they thought, oh, fifth has got... An empty summer, there's nothing scheduled yet. So, like, <laughs> we to the under 19s and played that tournament too. And then we obviously ended up winning the Euros with the under 19s for the first time ever, which I think was a massive step for and the youth teams, but also women's football in Holland. And then obviously we translated that into winning the Euros with the A team as well. Yeah. Well, it was only back in 2019 you have become the all time top goal scorer. I think it was your 60th goal in a 3-1 win against Cameroon back in 2019 in the World Cup. Viv, is there a tally that you've kind of got and you're thinking, well, I'm at 70 now, I'll easily break 100 or are you just going to just go with the flow and just keep banging in goals? No, I just go with the flow really. Like obviously I think maybe it's 100, but like past that, we'll just see whatever happens. Past uh, that, so you, you are going to get to 100. I'd, I'd like to think so. I'd like to hope so. Obviously, I'm 24. I still have got quite a couple of years left in me. And I think our quality at national team is, is pretty decent. So I like to think that we can continue to qualify for big tournaments and, yeah, continue to win a lot of games. And hopefully I can obviously play my part in that as, as a number nine. Love, thoroughly enjoyed talking about football. Before we move into the second half of the pod where we can start talking about my game, not your game, we, we put some questions out on social media. Um, we've also got a few cheeky questions ourselves. So it was good to do a quick question fire round uh, before we end the half. So um, I don't want any arguments, but number one, who is the smartest, Viv? Actually, Lisa is really smart. I'm smart, but Viv, Viv tries... A million times harder than I do. <laughs> she can't leave anything on, like any stone unturned. Like Bev has, but she's very detailed. Okay, it? who's the messiest? Me, Lisa. <laughs> I've been to your apartment a few times. It's not that bad. Who is the best at penalties? <laughs> Lisa, probably. No, not either. <laughs> We're both rubbish, but yeah. yeah. Don't. don't I'd say Bev. Are you not the penalty takers at Arsenal? No. Who is? Kim Little. Good record. Yeah, decent. Yeah. Yeah. If she misses a few, do you fancy it? No. No. <laughs> I'm a number nine that doesn't take penalties. No, fair enough. Yeah. Who's the best singer? Lisa. Yeah. Yeah, fancy a bit. He's really good, actually. Yeah? Yeah. What? yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just better than Viv, who's slightly toned deck. You, you can play us out. Who could do the most kick-ups? Viv. Nah, both. I'd say you. I'd say Viv's got more skills. Well, that's the next question. Who is the most skillful? Viv. I must be honest, before we go on to the next question, I remember the time when I came to your apartment, the second time I came back round, we'll we'll talk about a bit later. The skills that you demonstrated, even as a football fan, and I'm just chilling with a cup of coffee while you girls were just kicking the ball about like a kind of five-year-olds. The skills you did, I remember looking, thinking, oh my God, I don't know how you just did that. So yes, I, I did think there was a lot of showboating in the locker there, even for both of you. Who's the fastest? I'd give this one to Lisa. Yeah? I think Viv's getting faster, to be fair. 
I, I think it would be a very good race. We still need to have a proper, proper race. We always race against each other in training because we are both like the two fastest. So it's always a good session. You back onto some beautiful gardens. I think I might need to come over and actually we'll do an official MPH sports race. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going to set that up. Who do you support? Liverpool. I'd say Arsenal and Liverpool, to be honest. But I'm obviously like, I'm a Feyenoord fan in Holland. So Feyenoord is my, my first club. Yeah. Where did you both meet? Munich. Yeah. Munich. Yeah. Yeah. So, and last question Who made the first move? <laughs> uh, <laughs> both points in. Yeah. <laughs> Just for the record, it was Viv. <laughs> I, did point. I did point to you. Fantastic. Okay. Right. We're going to move on to the second part of the pod. Talk Sport and Property Podcast, sponsored by MPH Sports Property Academy. Download the app today from the App Store or Google Play by typing in MPH Sports, the trusted go-to app for sports people looking to buy or learn about property. We were introduced to each other about 18 months ago now, because we all share the same accountant, don't we? Adrian Granger, for anyone looking for an accountant, um, Adrian Griffiths and Peg, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah. Why were you interested in MPA Sports coming in and supporting you looking for a home to buy? I think for me, probably a bit different as for you, eh? Like, obviously, like, we'd been um, living in a rental apartment for, like, two years at that moment. And we obviously still have a contract left with Arsenal until the end of next season. And, and I think for for me, I was kind of looking to, to buy a house in and around St. Albans somewhere to... Yeah, to actually just live in and, and not waste money on, on rent the whole time. And obviously, like, that's how we got in contact with you directly to actually find a place for, for ourselves, really. Yeah, because most players know us as a, as a property finder for, for buying investments. But you instruct us to obviously find you and support you with finding a, a home. It actually happened really quickly, didn't it? We managed to find you a, an off-market property in a development where you had been previously renting. Had you been looking for long before Viv, you and I met? Uh, we'd been looking around a bit like we didn't really know what we wanted first like obviously like we we looked a couple of different places and we looked into apartments and into houses really and basically what we we found on the end is basically a mix of both if I was like, like an outside garden bit and yeah and as you said like in the development that we really wanted to buy in and yeah I mean the actually searching didn't really take that long let's leave the rest no it didn't now the search was nice and quick I think what was really interesting is that when I met you first of all Viv you know I knew that you were very structured you had been looking you'd had your right move links all set up at the time I think you said look Lisa was thinking about a house and and I think that you had mentioned about you know a garden would be ideal however you were renting a, a fantastic apartment close to the training ground. It was a great size, great condition, lovely development. Ideally, you wanted to stay amongst that complex, but nothing was coming available, was it? No, I think there were like a couple of flats and a couple of houses available, but basically... Yeah, we looked at other ones. Yeah, yeah we looked at other ones like in the development itself, but it either didn't hit a garden bit outside or the house price is obviously like around London are just incredibly high. So this like, one is very fussy as well. The kitchen <laughs> with the kitchen, if it's not open planned, if it's boxy. Why are houses so boxy in England? That's why like, we ended up doing I don't know. like re re renovating the uh, whole house. Don't yeah. Don't ruin my, one of my questions, Viv. I'm going to talk about that in a sec. <laughs> But I know you're right, because I did, I remember you at the time, I could tell that you were quite articulate and you were very much attention to detail. You, you were always about a floor plan. I know after we met, you said, can you come back and meet, meet Lisa? Um, I think I'm, I came around like on a Sunday night and our two hour meeting probably involved an hour to an hour and a half of you guys literally doing kickups and taking penalties with Chloe. Um, is this what you do with all your guests? You just come around and play football? That's what we do, yeah. <laughs> the ones that can play, yeah. <laughs> That's why I just stood out. I just had a <laughs> couple of cups of coffee, <laughs> making you yeah, tea and drinks whilst you had penalty competitions with Chloe. I know you have invested some money into the apartment, so you can now open up, Viv, and talk about your property renovation. Do you want to sort of share with listeners, you know, what you bought and what you've done so far? Because I've been back since, and it looks absolute first class. I'm really impressed. I mean, yeah, we obviously, like, we bought, yeah, what is it, like, a flat on the ground floor, um, which the first time we walked in, I thought very English and very boxy. Very cream. 
very cream, yes, and <laughs> carpet everywhere, which I'm also not used to as a Dutch person. Coming in, I think, like, obviously the size of it, like, we we both seen, like, saw the potential directly, uh, directly, really. And we ended up moving the kitchen into the living room, which obviously gave me my open open space, kitchen, living room idea. And we added on an extra bedroom in, in the property itself as well, which obviously, like, yeah, changed it from a two to a three bed, which I think in the future will, will only help whoever lives in this building. But yeah, we're really happy. Like it took it took quite long. Obviously, during COVID, um, a renovation during COVID is not easy. But we're happy that we're in it now, and it's all all finished. Yeah, because the, normally when people think of a, a flat, they think size is the one thing you compromise with. But the, your living room was always huge, wasn't it? And I think that was the reason why you explored moving the original kitchen into the living room, making it this lovely big open plan I mean I've seen it I can see it in the background you've got that kitchen you've got that island and it's just great for entertainment particularly if you've got sort of guests coming over and you've now replaced that kitchen with like a a versatile room really you know whether it's a study or or a a guest room or just another football room really or trophy cabinet well we've got a few now haven't we (laughs) have you had the property valued since you've done the work no, we haven't actually. No, we were saying that though, that I think it yeah. would be a good idea probably to get it done just to see kind of what, what you could get back for it. Yeah. But I mean, mm. it's, it's well, hard. Obviously, like, yeah, well, as you say, like we're talking about a flat, but walking into the house, I never have the feeling that we're in a flat. Like, I feel like we're just in a proper house, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really good size. And the fact that you've got in particular, the, the ceilings are, are unusually high, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Nah, really Extremely. high, which obviously makes it look so much, so much bigger. And there's a lot Lighter. of light coming in. And basically, like if you walk out, out in the back, like you directly walk into like a park, which which is really nice. So yeah, yeah, the, the gardens are stunning, aren't they? I know. Yeah. We've also got some more good news because this week we exchanged on our first investment together too, didn't we? We did. When did you take a first interest in property investment? Because we've been talking for a while, ever since that first meeting. I know we had some unfortunate experiences with the development we were buying in in Glasgow last year. Fast forward, we've found this lovely development in Liverpool. You bought it off market. It's a lovely little deal. It's got fantastic rental returns. But you have always had a bit of an appetite for this, haven't you? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I think... I don't know if that comes from my mum and dad, but they love property. They're obsessed. My dad, I know it's different, but he watches like every single house program there is to watch, doesn't he? Like Grand Designs or even Homes Under the Hammer, whatever. We, he loves all that. So it's just. Don't kind of, Homes Under the Hammer. I've been oh, on Homes Under it. the Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually watch it. I watch it. <laughs> but yeah, he's just kind of, my dad especially, he's just got a knack for all that stuff. He just really enjoys it and probably just something that that we've kind of that's probably why we get along really well me and your dad yeah but yeah I just yeah I like that I like obviously I I was lucky enough to have money left over especially from my time in Germany so I just thought I may as well try and put it to good use really and and then that's when we got talking to you and thought right this sounds like this sounds like a really cool opportunity so it just seems daft having money in the bank at the moment if we can sort of remove it from there and park it into other investments that's going to give you a greater return then you might as well just explore that and and you bought a great one there and i know we're buying another one as well at the moment i mean do any of the other arsenal ladies or women in the national team at scotland or or in holland do you know if any of them have got like an appetite for property the way you two have because a we've spoken about investment for a while with you more lisa and i know your apartment has been a great renovation for you, Viv. But is there other women like you that you know of? To be honest, like I'm trying to. Oh, <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm thinking in Dutch right now, which fucked me up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what do you mean? In, yeah, I'm trying instigate. to get. Yeah, I'm trying to like instigate with like our girls and national team and actually say like you need to you need to do the right things now. Like right now you've got the opportunity to do so. Um, I think a lot of girls obviously like as well with Arsenal and probably Scotland and Holland, they're throwing a lot of money away by just spend each month. And I know it's difficult to, to say, oh, like I play abroad, I'm going to buy a house in England because a lot of girls probably don't see a future there. Mm. But I do definitely think also back in Holland, there's opportunities to to invest and and to do the right things for yourself to set you up for football uh, for life after football because we're not going to be playing and earning that much money to 
to live a work-free life after. So I think obviously like every single little bit will will help us after football. Yeah, I think it's I think it's really important that you share your experiences and help influence others around you. I mean, is it ever like a topic of conversation then on like a train or a or a coach or a flight, depending on who you're playing and where? I mean there's been a few discussions. I think people just kind of struggle to actually just take the plunge and go and do it. I think that's the hardest thing is kind yeah. of when you have to part with like a, a big or a, a large amount money. of money. Yeah. And people just think you want to see results there and then. Obviously it's more long long term investment. But yeah, I think it's just people probably struggling to part with part with the money, to be honest with you. I think it's probably a confidence thing as well, isn't it? No, no, doubt. No. Yeah. I guess with you two doing it together it probably gives you both that sense of comfort and closure that you've obviously you've got me as well. Uh, and I can, you know, do my background checks and support you both. And if it doesn't feel right, then we don't go ahead with it. But you've always got each other. And I guess that if there is another professional female athlete that may not necessarily have a partner, then I guess it's, it's as you say, it's taking the plunge or just bouncing off your positive vibes and experiences that might encourage them. I mean, look, you, you two have played for some of the largest clubs in the world, including national countries. I mean. Can I ask, have you ever been introduced to some form of property education whilst you've been at Munich or whilst you've been at Arsenal? I know no. you're shaking your head, no. Not at all, honestly, right. like not all. The first of its kind was with you. Right. Not really before. Do you ever have educational workshops available to the club at Arsenal, ladies? No, we don't really. I mean, obviously, like I think... Throughout, through the PFA and that they try to encourage people to, to either study something or to, to get in contact with the right people to, to set you up for life after football. Um, I do know that, like, for example, at national team, we, we are now starting up like a development off pitch um, workshop program, as in literally probably from like working with, with homes and houses to actually being a physiotherapist taxes, or yeah. taxes or whatever, like, a really broad idea of actually trying to, to get people interested and to kind of know what's going on outside the footballing world. But I think it definitely can be a lot better than than what it is really, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I mean, I thoroughly enjoy doing these workshops for, for football clubs and rugby clubs and cricket clubs now. And I know we've spoken about it in the past. And I know you've kind of embraced it to say, look, I, we would love to get you in. We just don't really know how and I guess that is the appetite going to be there are the other women too busy to listen to a 20-25 minute workshop about just encouraging them to consider properties some form of investment the way it could protect or protect you guys for life after football really it's it's just understanding what else can Premier League life skilled endorsed companies like us do for a group of professional sportswomen like yourselves I mean not really much as I said like I think I think for if you look at our team, we're probably one of the teams in the league that actually don't really have any British, uh, yeah. British girls, if that makes sense. So like yeah. we've got a lot of like foreign girls from outside the UK that never see a future in, mm. in, the, in the UK anyway. So I think we're in that kind, like a bit of a special group, which obviously like a lot of girls won't be interested in, in buying in the UK. But I think a lot of other teams are obviously like when, when you've got a lot of British players and, and players that actually want to invest in the UK, I think it can be really interesting. Well, I know the demand's there because I have so many messages or followers on Instagram from professional sportswomen, whether it's in cricket or whether it's in football. So we know the appetite is there for it. It's just trying to encourage more to consider it, you know, even if it's knowledge we can provide for them to buy in their own country. It doesn't have to be in the UK. But it's, uh, it's an interesting conversation, one that we, we need to explore further on at some point, because I think what we do doesn't exist in sport. And I just think that the more knowledge that we can provide will only encourage more athletes to do what's best with their, with their money that they, that they earn. I'm interested to know more about your longer term property goals, because I know you've got an appetite for it. Viv clearly has this home renovation program in mind that's going to continue throughout your lives. Is there a, a plan that you guys have discussed? Is it just about maybe focusing on building up that passive income that could one day replace your salaries, really? I think so, without a doubt. Eh? Just kind of building it up, as you say. Um, I'm hoping to get two investments. So that'll be obviously a big thing for me. But I think, yeah, just like you say, building up your, your portfolio and just... Yeah. Really having the investments there to 
keep you going every month once once football's not there anymore. Yeah, definitely. What would you say the advantages are buying property over investing in stocks or shares? Or is that something you've considered in the past, or have you have you had first hand experience in? I have no idea about stocks and shares, to be honest with you. I've just, obviously, a lot of people, you've heard that obviously how well property investment does. And after speaking to you as well, we had just a really good vibe, really. Um, good. And obviously, yeah, it was just nice and friendly and we felt like we could trust you. And obviously, meeting through Adrian, Adrian's also a great person and one that we really hold high in our expectations. So, yeah, I think it's just the whole thing of being part of something really is the part that I like and something different. It just... It, it's something to come home to and think about other than yeah, football definitely. that you enjoy and it's in total other end of the spectrum is like property investment as opposed to football and it's just obviously combining the two of them together is, is a great great thing to do yeah no i agree it's more exciting than stocks and shares anyway isn't it <laughs> um i just want to sort of publicly say you've really been so supportive of me personally and also of MPA Sports, particularly on social media and in person. I've always enjoyed our company. I've got Chloe, I'm homeschooling uh, from the office this afternoon. So she's next door. She's definitely going to want to come and see you in a second. What would you both say to any player who may be just a bit cautious about investing their savings into property? I think, yeah, if you've got the money, absolutely go for it. Grab it with two hands because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've done it and we've we've not looked back since. And, mm. yeah, just to go for it, take the plunge and be brave and do it. Definitely. Well, I've really, <laughs> I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> Viv's laughing. Uh, look, I, I've really enjoyed today. I love our relationship. You both crack me up. You've, you've been so supportive. Thank you for everything that you've ever done. Thank you for joining us on the pod and good luck tomorrow. No, sorry, Sunday's game against Birmingham. Hopefully yeah. it's hopefully it's on. Fingers crossed. We'll see. We'll see. Amazing. Thanks, girls. Thanks ever so much. Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.